everyone. It's Amanda Bickerstaff, the CEO and co-founder of AI for Education. Really excited to be here with you today. It's been a while since I've done a video, but I really am enjoying Notebook LM and so is our team. Um, it's also something that we're seeing to have potentially a lot of value in schools. And so Notebook LM is a Google um, experiment. It's actually something that we first saw almost a year ago today at an uh, event uh, during Ed Tech Week, and it's really exciting. This over, I guess a couple weeks ago, it went out of beta into experiment mode, and now everyone can try it. And what's really interesting is that Notebook LM is using Gemini, the large language model. It's 1.5 million token window version, so it has this ability to have an enormous amount of content and context uh, to give you this opportunity to start to like make sense of all the documents that you have and really start talking to them and synthesizing them. While it is working absolutely to lower hallucinations or misinformation, it's still going to mess some things up. Remember, early stages of all generative AI technology, but I want to show you a couple things to get started. So first of all, it's free, which is super awesome, and if you're going to have to make sure you look at the terms of service, um, but what you see is that you can create notebooks, and so these are going to be examples that they've created for you. Um, I don't think we need to talk about mushrooms, but what you can do is you can create a new notebook. And I'm gonna create a new book a couple of different ways. You can do it through Google Docs, you can do it through links, you can do it through pasting text as well. It allows you to do up to 50 sources, which is pretty cool. And you can see that it has all different types of, uh, you can do PDF, text files, markdown or audio even. And now like, so you can actually upload like a, they have a connection now where you can do, uh, you know, the audio um, from a YouTube video or just from even this video. So what I do is I'm gonna actually upload, you guys know us, you know that we love doing doing all things um, education and guidelines and so for AI. And so these are going to be some examples of some guidelines that we've either helped create or really believe in. And so I've got both um, New North Carolina's piece that was done by um, DPI there and Vera and shout out to all of our people in the Southeast impacted by the hurricane. Uh, it's a Park Hill guidelines, which are pretty simple that were done with our wonderful partner out in, uh, in Kansas City. And then I'm also going to put in Chicago's guidance, which uh, was released a couple of uh, like last month. Um, and what you can do now is they're going to be uploaded and they're going to be essentially parsed. And so the um, large language model, the are starting to like parse all this information. And what's really interesting is you have this notebook guide. And what you're going to notice is that's really interesting because I have two versions of this now. It seems to be like you kind of have to pick the right content. So it's Park Hill is so little in comparison to the North Carolina and Chicago guidance, and it's kind of getting. It's not even in the summary. And in fact, if you start creating things, it might pick up Park Hill or not. And so that's gonna be an example of like, always think about the use case that you have. In this case, maybe I shouldn't, have, if I didn't include North Carolina, maybe, uh, or sorry, Park Hill, it might be a better piece because it's comparing two larger kind of documents together. And what you can do though, is you can start creating different things. And so you can chat with the documents. So you can say, what are the similarities between all three documents? And what's going to do is it's going to go and what's what i love about this is it's actually going to give you an answer and it's going to cite back to where it is within the document so you can actually double check it because remember everybody always always double check for hallucinations uh so we have guidelines for responsible use ethical considerations and here we go so now it's actually pulling up which source it's in so this is in park hill uh this is going to be in chicago public schools uh, this is going to be the North Carolina guidance. So you can double check the content to see where it's being pulled for them. And we love that, especially if you're thinking about this with students that are potentially using this to help study, is that they can double check to make sure that it is accurate. Um, you also can build study guides. You can build FAQ, table of comp uh, contents, briefing docs, and timelines. So let's do, um, let's actually do a FAQ. And it's gonna take a little time to do that, so give it a little bit of patience. So I'm actually gonna go back to the one that I've already created while we're waiting, because I wanna show you something else that's pretty interesting. I will say it get kind of confusing to use the UX, so always like hit this notebook guide if you don't know what to do. And what you'll notice is that what I have here is I can generate a, um, I can generate, oh, this is actually the same one, so let's actually go back to the guidelines that I've already done, because this one's already been done. You can see I've done a couple notes, and what you'll notice is that like this is only comparing the two, and it kind of left out Park Hill on its own. Uh, but what I can do is I have created, essentially what's really fascinating that people love is that you can create a essentially a podcast. It sounds very NPR-y. Um, I am not a podcast person, and so I find the voices to be uncanny, but I know that like Mandy and our team 
is like starting to give them like personalities, which is really funny. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to a portion of the um, this to give you guys an example of what's happening. So let's listen along. Totally. And that's where their sweet spot is, the e-bike. You're still in control, pedaling, but you get that extra help to conquer those hills and go further. Okay, I'm with them so far. So AI is like that e-bike boost for learning. It's there to make us better, not replace us. I like it. It's a really balanced way to look at it. Not all doom and gloom, but not ignoring the challenges either. Exactly. So, hey guys, <laughs> so like fascinating, right? And what you see is it's always gonna be two people and they're gonna take these kind of very NPR piece. I will say if I had listened to this, because I know these these uh, documents very keenly, I could tell that they were trying to create, the, the, the podcast is trying to create uh, like some kind of narrative that they're really different. And, and so it's kind of creating some hallucinations and flattening mm -hmm. and also making more extreme the content within the document. So what I would say is whenever you're starting using a, doc, a, a new tool that's generative AI, you always want to start with a first use case that you're very familiar with or you're expert in. So you can kind of test the limitations and start to understand how best to use them because these are experiments, right? And there's not a lot of really good indications of how to use this. But what I will say though, is there's some really cool things to do here. Um, we've had um, Corey on our team created just like a funny like chipmunk themed podcast. We've had people maybe give up a little bit too much private information to create podcasts about themselves. We do not suggest using your real information, but you can also, like you see here, if a student or even you are studying as an educator for an upcoming uh, you know, test or assessment, you could use this to build a study guide. You can use this to help you ask questions of the documents. You can help it identify key areas. If you're doing working with a research paper and you know, at this point you're like completely out of time and out of like attention just to help you reassert that the stuff that you are using is the best stuff you can be using from these research papers. I think that is a really cool opportunity as well. But as again, I hope that you guys enjoy as we walk through some of these new um, instances. So here you go. Here's that AI literacies. You got, you know, quiz, you've got an answer key, you've got essay questions. These are just some really awesome ways to start really working with generative AI in meaningful ways with these new tools. So I hope you enjoyed it and learn with us together. And yeah, keep experimenting. That's the best thing you can do right now. Thanks, everybody.